What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in today. This is lesson number three in our unit for beginning improvisers. If you've tuned into our first two lessons where we focused exclusively on rhythm, you're probably thinking to yourself, Sean, when the heck are you going to teach me how to do what you just played? Well, you're in luck. Today is the day where we're going to start talking about what notes we choose in order to build great melodies as improvisers. Today's lesson, just like every lesson available on this YouTube channel, has some accompanying material that you can check out in my virtual studio. Check out the link out in the description. There's a handout. There's also an extra practice lesson available there where you and I will work through some of this stuff in a more practice way. Today, we're going to talk about some concepts, but in that practice session, we'll actually like play the stuff. I'll play, you'll play, we'll do some repetition so we can actually like work this stuff and get it into our playing. So I think there's some great stuff there. I encourage you to check it out. Now, based on what you heard me play at the beginning, and maybe what you've learned in school or from other musicians, you might think to yourself, all right, this is just going to be another blue scale lesson. While the blue scale is important, that is not where we are actually going to start in our discussion towards how we choose the notes that we play when we are improvising. Before you think to yourself, wait, Sean, my band director told me that the blue scale is something that I should absolutely get memorized. Your band director is right. However, it's important that we keep scales and all the other music theory that we learned in the right perspective. As trombonist, or really any wind instrument for that matter, one of our biggest roles is to play melodies. And when we improvise, we never want to lose connection with that. What we play should really be melodic in some way. If we focus too much on scales or chords or arpeggios, and we think that's the only thing we need to worry about when we're improvising, our playing is always going to sound very scalar or arpeggio based. And while we might be doing a great job of like fitting into each chord, it might just lack that certain something that's really going to make it connect to the listener. Instead, we want to think that scales, arpeggios, all this stuff are just different tools that we use to build melodies. And if we keep that perspective in the right place, I think that will help us to grow more as musicians and in the end, create more satisfying souls to listen to that don't just sort of like satisfy some sort of theoretical mandate that we have to play a certain scale on a certain chord, but we're really focused on building melodies that are meaningful for us and hopefully memorable for the listener. So if we're not going to worry about scales as sort of the baseline of how we're going to choose notes today, what are we going to do? We're going to look at two groupings of four notes. These are going to help us connect with some of the common melodic shapes that we find in jazz, specifically that we find in the blues. And I think these are going to lead you in the right direction just to get started. Eventually, we will talk about some scales and things like that in this series of lessons. But for today, we're just worried about these four note groupings. All right. Our first four note grouping consists of these four pitches, a B flat, a D flat, an E flat and an F. Now, as you heard in the example up top, I play those in two octaves. Choose whichever octave you feel like fits your range best. You can get a ton of mileage out of these four notes. Now there, I did use all four notes. But the key to thinking melodically about this is realizing that you don't have to use all the four notes and you don't have to use them in that same order. I would encourage you to start by going from the bottom to the top so you get really confident. But as soon as you feel comfortable, start to move them around and start to set little parameters for yourself about how you're going to create a melody. Maybe you start by saying, all right, I'm only going to play two of the notes. <laughs> Or maybe it's only three of the notes. Or maybe you're going to say, I'm going to start on my low B flat and ascend. Or maybe you're going to start on the high F and descend. Maybe you're going to skip around between these four notes. However, 
you decide to combine these notes, it's important that we practice within these parameters. You want to sort of set yourself a challenge of can I be creative and can I create melodies inside of a little box? If you just have sort of every option in the world to choose from, your playing is always going to sound sort of scattered and not very focused. But as soon as you give yourself that little box to work in and say, can I be creative here and create melodies in this box, it's really going to focus everything in so you can create nice sounding melodies. Once we have good command of this small grouping of notes, we want to put this into tempo and maybe think about combining it with some of that rhythmic information that we practiced in the first two lessons. To do this, we're going to take a one measure rhythmic idea and we are going to sort of like superimpose it on top of these four notes. Now we can play any number of repeated notes. We can move through all four notes. We can play in any octave. We just have to worry about sticking to that rhythm. Just to show you what this would look like, our rhythm that we're going to use sounds like this. For those of you keeping score at home, that is eighth, quarter, eighth. Or we could think about it as two eighths, eighth note rest, and a single eighth note. So do dot dot. We're going to move that through this grouping of notes to see what type of different ideas we can create. And I'm going to throw a metronome on because I want to really be in tempo when I do this. And this is how you should practice this. You can choose any of those rhythmic ideas we worked on, any combination of these four notes, bottom octave, high octave, whatever you want to do. Let's just hear what this would sound like. All right, that's a good starting place. A lot of mileage we can get there. Let's look at our other four note grouping to see what kind of ideas we can get there. Now, this four note grouping starts on an F to a G to a B flat to a D flat. Now we're still thinking in terms of the key of B flat. So I started on an F here because we're thinking this is going to cover a little like higher chunk of our range or like a higher chunk of that scale, so to speak. Just puts us in a different area of the range, has kind of a different selection of notes so we can get some different ideas. So hopefully you could hear that that gave me very different sounding ideas than that first four note grouping. And that's what we want is to think these sort of different collections of notes give us different sounds. They might create what we call different vocabulary when we think about the different ways we can combine them. Regardless of what set of notes you're using, you've got to make sure that you're always thinking about how's my sound? How's my intonation? How's my articulation? How's my inflection? How's my rhythm? These are the elements that are going to make your solo sound convincing more than the notes that you choose. The notes are important, but you can choose all the right notes in the world. And if these other elements aren't there, your solo is never going to sound convincing. So really make sure you place a high priority on some of those fundamentals of good musicianship as you are working on this stuff. So our first example we checked out with the metronome. Let's hear this one with a little bit of rhythm section behind it. This is just going to be a vamp on one chord, a B flat dominant seventh chord. So we're really just going to be in the key of B flat mostly. Now some of these notes don't necessarily perfectly fit into that chord. We don't even care because we're really thinking about building melodies. If our melodies are strong, our ear is going to sort of accept a little bit of dissonance that might be there, particularly on the D flat, for example. It's not totally in this chord. <laughs> last thing for today is what if we thought about combining these two different groupings similar to what I did up top. What we'll hopefully hear is that my ideas start to sound almost like a scale. And if I actually cram these two things together, you would see there is a little bit of a scale that this creates. That is not a specific scale that you would find in a jazz theory book or that you might learn in jazz band. However, we definitely can hear that these ideas that are created by those two collections of notes really sound good and they feel good to play when we are improvising. So we've got to be careful that we don't worry too much about that I've got to play a certain scale, or if it is not in a scale, 
that it doesn't really work. It's all about building nice melodies. All right, to round things out today, let's talk about our listening example that we wanna check out to support some of these concepts today. We are gonna look at the recording Freddie Freeloader by Miles Davis. This is on the album Kind of Blue, one of the most important jazz albums ever recorded. Miles takes the second solo on this, and I would really encourage you to at least listen to maybe the first 30 seconds to a minute. I'd encourage you to listen to the whole thing, but really check out that first 30 to 45 seconds of Miles' solo. You'll hear him use, again, a small collection of notes to build his ideas. Not the same thing we did today, not the same grouping of notes, but that his ideas tend to consist of only a handful of notes that he manipulates with different rhythms, makes it really swinging. He uses a lot of inflection where he like half valves things, um, things of that nature. And that's really what makes that solo work. As always, that link is down in the description so that you can access it nice and easily and check out what Miles is playing. All right, that does it for lesson number three. As I mentioned, scales are not bad, arpeggios are not bad. I work on this information all the time, but it's always in service of the melody. And that is what we wanna keep in mind as we are working on improvisation, regardless of what style or instrument we are playing. All right, we'll see you in the woodshed.